Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. Not only have I been the owner of Mint Mobile for the last few years, I've also been a customer. I don't know if you knew this, but anyone can get the same premium wireless for $15 a month plan that I've been enjoying. It's not just for celebrities, so do like I did and have one of your assistant's assistants switch you to Mint Mobile today. I'm told it's super easy to do at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile, with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. What it's about is finding out what truly makes you come alive. Mm -hmm. What makes you come alive? And spending more of your life force energy with your attention invested in that. Hey girl, imagine a life where you feel supported, connected, and understood. I get it. Being a mom is hard, especially when you're spinning so many plates. We exhaust ourselves trying to create the perfect life for our family. You deserve to enjoy your family without the stress perfectionism brings. On this podcast, I provide practical and relatable life experiences. I teach women quick and easy to use strategies to help them reclaim their identity, reignite their marriage, and enjoy their children. If you're ready to be challenged, then pull up a chair, grab a pen and paper, because it's about to go down. I'm Veronica Cisneros, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and this is the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. Hey ladies, welcome to Empowered and Unapologetic. I am your host, Veronica Cisneros. Today's guest is a catalyst for personal transformation, a spiritual life and business coach, as well as an author of the original wisdom, Harness the Power of the Authentic You. After 28 years in corporate land, she enrolled herself in a master's program in spiritual psychology, which changed her life from the inside out. So please help me by welcoming Donna Bond. 
Hey, Donna. Hello. Hi, Veronica. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Absolutely. I'm super excited to have you on. So I've been doing my research and boy, oh boy, do you have loads of information for our listeners. <laughs> loads of it. Yes. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh my goodness. Well, um, I started climbing the corporate ladder, you know, when I was in my early uh, 20s and I I was in hospitality for 28 years as a corporate marketing executive. And I sort of got to the top of the ladder and I looked around and I said, hey, all this is not all that. Mm -hmm. And even though it all looked perfect on the surface, I was working yeah. for an amazing company. I was working alongside people who were best in class. I actually physically reported to this beautiful location, the Ritz Carlton Laguna Niguel, yeah. you know, atop a bluff in Southern California, overlooking the blue Pacific, right? It was absolutely stunning. It was gorgeous. It all, I was making great money. I had, you know, sort of fame and stature in my mm -hmm. own little world. And deep down, I was really unhappy, like really unhappy and actually had illness brewing in my body that mm -hmm. was just around the corner and literally on the advice of a psychic. I had gone crying to this woman, literally, and I'm like, I have to find my purpose, which, Veronica, I had done that in my 20s, in my 30s, right? Now I'm in my 40s when this is happening, and I'm still in this search for what is it? You know, what am I here to do? What am I here to be? Knowing inside of myself there was something else, there was something more, but I had no idea what it was. And the most interesting part about all of this, I think, is that it all looked so good on the surface, mm -hmm. right? I had what people dream of having. Yeah. But yet the truth was deep down, there was this deep, deep unhappiness. So I went to this psychic and, you know, literally crying to her, I've got to find my purpose, help me. And she said, Donna? They're spelling it out for me. Spiritual psychology. <laughs> My first response was, what in the hell is spiritual psychology? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Um, even though it was a big wrestling match for my ego, yeah, because I was working a 60 hour a week job, right? I was married. I had plenty of things in my life that were happening. There was absolutely no room whatsoever for a master's program, like going back to school at the age of 45, yeah. which seemed insane to me and yeah. illogical and ridiculous. But there was something, right? There was something inside. And as a matter of fact, the woman who was my admissions counselor, her name was Veronica. Oh, no way. And she, we must have had, you know, 10 phone calls where she was helping me get on board with the idea of coming into this program. Yeah. And, you know, she said to me, she said, hey, Donna, why don't you come for one weekend mm -hmm. and just see what happens? And that was it. That was That's it. Nice. One weekend changed my entire life. That's nice. And then I went on to the five-year plan, but that's like a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, a lot of the women that are listening, they're in marriages and they have all of the things. They have the house, the dog, you know, or the cat, the kids, they get to stay at home. They don't have to work. And, you know, they're going about their day feeling as if something's missing. It's just, they feel unseen, unsupported, unappreciated, mm -hmm. but they still go about their day to day doing the same thing, you know, thinking that, well, I shouldn't be complaining because I get to be at home. I yeah. get to spend time with my kids and I get to have all of these benefits, but I still don't understand why I feel as if something's missing. And they're so afraid of change. 
they're so afraid of change. It's like, I'm not going to step out of what's familiar because I should be happy. And what I find is they don't communicate their needs. They don't know how to set boundaries, nor do they have the tools to go ahead and set a healthy, you know, healthy, healthy form or platform for, you know, them to communicate with their husbands. How do you get to that place where it's like, okay, wait a minute. I have all of these things, right? Just like you, Ritz Carlton on this bluff, like it's happening, you know, making all of this money and, you know, the celebrity status, you know, within your business, people, you're well known. How do you get to this place where it's like, I need to pursue change. Like this is still not fulfilling me. How do you get to that? Because that's a lot. It feels as if like, especially for women, for you know, married women, it feels like, wait a minute, is, am I going to get a divorce? You know, is this going to be like all of the consequences they think of? And they're very extreme and untrue. But how do you get to that place of, okay, change needs to happen? How do you start developing those steps? Yeah, I love your question. And there's so much, right, in what you just shared. Yeah. <laughs> there's so much. I, what's coming forward for me to say straight away, Yeah, it, regardless of anybody's you know, varying different situations. Life itself wants to express through us, period. It's like we are each an individualized expression of creation itself. And therefore, we're creators. And we have to be creating. And that is the bottom line. And in the material world, in the physical world, we have a lot of stuff, right? We have a lot of things. We accumulate a lot of whatever, belongings, status, achievements, you know, accolades, all of these things having to do with things that are outside of us. And here's sort of the big misnomer, right? Is we think that what we're looking for is something in the physical world. We think that another thing or another relationship or another, whatever it is, is going to make us happy. But anytime we're seeking for something that is outside of us, the formula is backwards. Okay. So we've got these two points. One, that we are creators and that life is seeking to create itself. It's like life is seeking to express itself through us and we have to create in some way. Mm -hmm. And the second is that we're not going to find the fulfillment and the the deep meaning and the purpose by looking for something that is outside of us. So you take these two like opposing forces, really. Yeah, definitely. Right. And what I have discovered is the creation that life is asking me to do is, or to be, is the expression of who I really am, Mm -hmm. the truth of who I really am. And, you know, you've said it best, who am I unapologetically? Yeah. Like, what do I have to say that might be a little bit scary to say because maybe everybody's not going to agree with me? Or what do I want to do out in the world that might feel a little bit different than what my family does or what my parents did, like my family of origin or their family or their family? I think each of us on our soul's journey, we are all landed in these situations that are inviting learning and growth. And the only way that we can experience learning and growth is to get out of that tribe of familiarity, get out of that circle of everything that we know. Now, I'm not saying leave your husband. I'm not saying like get a divorce and leave your kids. It's not about that. What it's about is finding out what truly makes you come alive. Mm -hmm. What makes you come alive? And spending more of your life force energy with your attention invested in that and focused on that. And I think another, another way that we miss 
create our life is where we get into those vicious loops of focusing our life force energy on the things that we are dissatisfied with. Right. So it's like we're going to get back what we give out. And people don't Mm -hmm. realize this is universal law. This is happening all of the time. We're going to get back whatever we give out. So if we're giving ourselves to our discontent, we're giving ourselves to the things that we're unhappy about, we're focusing all of our energy and our attention on what's not working in our life. And that's what we're going to get back. It is a universal law. So what can we do? We can begin to shift our attention. And I think a good formula is what brings you joy? Mm-hmm. What yeah. brings you joy? Which is very different than sort of pursuing happiness. Yes. Yeah. We could fake happiness all day. And we could say, right. my kids make me happy. My husband makes me happy. But it always, it always, if you look, the primary word in there is makes me happy versus I am fulfilled in life by living intentionally, by being able to step outside and, you know, let the sun hit my face. Like yeah. that's me enjoying and living life. There's a complete difference. It's not dependent on something else. So I appreciate you saying that. Well, and I think another indicator that we're in this stuck place yeah. is where we're caught up in the past or we're caught up in the future, right? Because yes. when you just said like letting the sun hit my face, that is something that can only happen in the now. It happens mm-hmm. in the present moment of time. Our life is happening in the present moment of time. It's not behind us and it's not up ahead of us. Yeah. And I think when we're unhappy, you know, similar to where I was, truthfully, like I was trying to get someplace else, right? Like I'm not happy where I'm where I am, but I'm trying to get over there. The the first thing we have to do is to come into accordance with where we're at. We have to come into alignment with what's in front of us and to be able to look at that truthfully. And honestly, with an open heart. Okay. How would we do that? Is it a question that we ask ourselves? Is it a morning ritual? Is it um, a mantra? What, what is it exactly? How do we get to that place that you're, you're speaking of? Mm. Well, you know, it's actually a lot more simple than we think it is. We have to stop. We just have to stop. We have to stop trying to get someplace. And we can just even in this moment, we can close our eyes. Mm-hmm. We can take a deep breath. And we can just be. We can stop the doing and the thriving and the striving and the going. And yeah. we can just rest just for a couple minutes. Right? And people can't even... People think even for a couple of minutes, their mind goes waggy and they can't sit here. But I just want to invite everybody into this. Like all of your listeners right now, I just want to invite everyone, whatever you're doing, right? You're probably multitasking as you're listening to this. Just stop. And maybe even put your right hand on your heart and just connect with yourself and remember that you are this expression of creation. And that is magnificent. Mm -hmm. So providing yourself. Say it again. It it sounds like you're providing yourself with this this ability to reset. Mm, Yeah, I love that. Yeah, if you want to think about it that way. Right. Because I agree, I agree. We're like on this constant, um, this hamster wheel, nonstop. What's next? What's next? You know, picking up the kids, dropping off the kids, um, lunches, breakfast, husband's coming home, making sure the house is clean, laundry done, doctor appointments scheduled. You know, everything's on everybody's calendar. And But you're not on your calendar. Yes, at all. You're at not all. on your calendar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um I quit my job. I enrolled myself in this master's program and uh, 
a year later, I discovered I had a frozen shoulder, which was a gorgeous metaphor, by the way, (laughs) for where I was in my life, because I knew that I was unhappy, but I wasn't doing anything about it. Right. So I like wound up with this frozen shoulder and (laughs) I ended up going out on a leave of absence and having surgery. And after I had surgery, I went to this program at the Chopra Center in Carlsbad, California, and it was called Rest and Restore. And it Mm -hmm. was there that I learned to meditate. But they gave us this little mantra, like not a meditation mantra, but this little jingle that has worked for me every day since then. And this little mantra was RP. M, rise, P, meditate. (laughs) So Veronica, right? You've got to, you can't look at your phone. You can't put on the news. You can't take the dog for a walk. Yeah. You got to wake up. You've got to go to the bathroom. And then you've got to be the first priority Mm -hmm. in your day so that you can fill your cup. And, you know, I say this to my clients all the time. If your cup is not full and you're giving from an empty cup, it's no wonder you're unhappy. It's no wonder you feel like crap, right? Yeah. Because you're trying to give from a place there's nothing left. Yeah. Absolutely. So even if you listen to yourself breathe mm-hmm. just for a couple of minutes, I think the sacred act of doing this for yourself, like literally taking the time. And I actually have a special place in my bedroom right in front of a sliding glass door. I've got some candles and some crystals and I'm a Course in Miracles student. So I have my Course in Miracles and there's an environment that I have created to support myself. Yeah. In this reverence that I am honoring myself with. And, and I really want people to think about it that way. It's like you're making this epic human journey, right? As a spiritual being on a human adventure. Yeah. It's epic what we do here, right? Yes. It's not easy to live on this planet. It's not easy to be in these bodies. It's not easy to have a human experience. And so what if we could just pay homage to that? Mm-hmm. And we and we do it for ourselves. Because like I was saying earlier, what we give out is what we get back. Yeah. So when we can begin to honor ourselves, listen to ourselves, pay attention to the real feelings that we're having instead of ignoring them or deflecting them or bouncing our attention someplace else so that we don't have to feel our feelings. That's a way that we begin to cultivate a relationship with ourself that acts as the foundation on which all other relationships work, happen, and are set. Yeah. I agree. And the other thing is, if we do not allow us, if we do not provide ourselves with time to reset, to reconnect, we do. We find ourselves triggered all day, irritated, frustrated, quick to yell at the ones we love the most. And it impacts our marriages substantially because you're not providing your true authentic self to your husband. You're providing, you know, what you think he needs from you. And then resentful in the process. And the same thing goes for your kids. You're, you're doing everything you can to compromise yourself to fulfill their needs, then resenting them, and then feeling guilty at the end of the night because you were not present. Yeah. So it's a vicious it's, loop. It's 100% a vicious loop. And so if you didn't take that leap, let's say you were still in that corporate world, what, would, how, what do you think your life would look like? I mean, would anxiety, would depression be in the mix, right? Yeah. If you were to stay in that zone, although you were successful, most of us, most of us ignore 
what's happening in our body. I think what's other, what's, what's also really important to look at here is the repetitive monotony of sameness that we get trapped in. And that's really what was happening to me in my career, right? Like it didn't matter how many new jobs I had. It was like sort of the same old, same old, right? I was not growing. I was not growing. I was not evolving and learning and changing. And so this is a big piece of how life wants to move through us, right? Life wants us to be a bigger, freer, fuller, more expanded expression of ourselves. When we get a fixed mindset and we decide, hey, I already know it all. Yeah, I already went to school. I already, you know, I I have all the answers. Yeah. We immediately close ourselves down. We immediately limit any possibility for anything else because we've confined ourselves with the limitations of our own mind. So going back to school for me was a lot more significant as a broader idea than maybe what I realized when I was actually doing it because suddenly I was having to, you know, use my beginner's mind. I was suddenly Mm -hmm. trying out new muscles that I had never used before. Right. And so what happens when we step out of our comfort zone, it requires courage and when we bring ourselves through something that requires courage, new gifts inside of ourselves blossom. Like, I don't know how else to say it. Any dormant talents, skills, abilities, inner gifts that we have that may have been lying dormant because we're exercising other things that we're using repetitively over and over and over again, these other gifts that are waiting to be activated inside of us cannot be activated until we're willing to get out of our comfort zone. And there's something magical that happens. It's like, you know, that expression, uh, leap and the net will appear right? (laughs) Think about Indiana Jones. I think it was, um, I don't know if it was in the first one or the second one, the last (laughs) crusade. He's like, his father's dying in the next room and he's got to go get the grail and he's going to like jump into this abyss. And all of a sudden he remembers, he remembers like, it's a test, Mm -hmm. right? It's a test. And so he jumps and sure enough, right? This magical bridge unfolds beneath him. And, you know, I walked away from my very big fat corporate career, making multiple six figures with a lot of status and prestige. And that was a little bit like jumping into the abyss. I got to tell you. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) And a lot of things got born inside of me that could not otherwise have been born. That yeah. would not otherwise have been born. Yeah, absolutely. So basically what you're saying is, had you not have taken this leap, you you would have stayed stagnant, not developing these new, well, these already existing muscles that you had yeah. that... That wanted to be out in the world. Yeah. That wanted to be used, right? Like yes. speaking to people. That wasn't something that was happening, you know, in my corporate arena in the same way that it happens in my work today. Yeah. So writing, I wasn't really right. You know, I was writing corporate marketing plans. You know, that's yeah. enough to put you to sleep. <laughs> right. So it sounds like right now what you're saying, I often ask, will ask my clients, what is it costing you? What is it costing you to stay stagnant? What is it costing you to stay on this hamster wheel and do that repetitive cycle over and over? Another question I'll ask them is, what is it benefiting you? And right away, they look at me with the crazy eyes and say, Veronica, it doesn't benefit me. That's why I'm here. And it's like, no, no, no. It's benefiting you. Yeah, That's why you've been doing, game. right? Sure. That's why you've been doing it for so long. You just said it perfectly. This was something familiar for you. You knew how to write those those business presentations, you know, those corporate letters. You knew how to do all of those things, but you didn't know how to exercise those muscles. And what was benefiting you with you continuing down that corporate ladder 
was you never had to step outside of your comfort zone because you were in your zone business-wise. Right. Yeah. But really identifying who you were, well, that was scary. And that required you to leap. You did it, which is great. But I just want to make sure like these women listen to understand that you're in this zone of repetition for fear of, of what it might look like if you were to do something different. Yeah. And I love and what it. It doesn't have to be a big jump. No. Monica, right? It doesn't. Yeah. So let's just talk about that for a minute. Yes. Because all you really need to get out of the comfort zone is a little willingness. That's yep. really all you need a little willingness. And you've got to be willing to go into a space you've never been in before. You have to be willing. Maybe to get dirty, right? Maybe to fall down. Maybe to face a fear that you haven't wanted to face before. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be a big, you know, you don't have to quit your life. It can be one little tiny step because even little tiny steps will take us all the way up Mount Kilimanjaro. (laughs) Okay. So can you give us, can you give us three steps? How do we do this? Yeah. So step number one is willingness, right? Mm -hmm. And that is being willing to get it wrong, being willing to have egg on your face, being willing to learn something new, being willing to get out of your zone of familiarity. Right. Okay. So that's the first thing. Yeah. Being willing. So once you demonstrate that willingness, you automatically are going to come up against your fears because that's just the way it works. Right. Yep. So Absolutely. now let's say you're looking at a fear face to face. You're staring that fear in the eye and you have a choice. You can either retreat back to the comfort zone. Yeah, which most of us do, ladies. Which most of us do, right? right? Mm -hmm. Or we can look that fear in the eye and we can say this, I see you, fear. (laughs) I see you. I acknowledge you. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge you. I know that you're there. And I know that you're there just trying to keep me safe. I know that you're there because you're just trying to protect me. And I love you for that. And I thank you for that. And I'm doing this anyway. Bingo. Yes. And I'm doing this anyway. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So then that puts us into the growth zone. Okay? So we go out of the comfort zone. into We take willingness takes us into the fear zone. Courage takes us into the growth zone. Right? Well, in the growth zone... Now, we do have to be willing to start again. We have to be willing to get it wrong because in the growth zone, we're given many, many opportunities to perfect our craft, essentially, right? Absolutely. So this is a place where we're starting over and we are really demonstrating commitment, It's like when you step up to the plate and you swing the bat and you don't hit the ball on the first try, do you just throw down the bat and say, I'm out, I'm not even going to play the game? Or do you get back up there and you, you know, balance your weight and you get your stance correct and you grip that bat and you take another swing? I'm so not a sports person. I can't even believe that. (laughs) No, I I I just like came forward. Yes, I love that analogy. I use that all the time to describe the difference between willingness and willfulness. So it's crazy that, like, I'm listening to you say that. I'm like, I wonder if she's heard me talk before. I haven't, haven't. but I'm a little bit psychic, so. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, holy moly. Yeah, I would teach that all the time. I love that you said that. Yes, keep going, though. Keep going. Right. So this is where we're committing. This is where it's like, I'm in the game. I'm staying here. I know yeah. I'm going to get it wrong. I know I'm going to, every time I get it wrong, I get to learn something new. Yeah. I get to learn something else. 
And this is a very, very important frame of mind. This is a very important way of being. And this is actually the basis of spiritual psychology is being able to see the world, see our life and everything that's in it as a beautifully designed opportunity, giving us the chance to grow and learn and evolve. Bingo. Yeah. And it's like, you're either against that process or you're with that process. And if you're against that process, I'm sorry to let you know, you're going to suffer. You're going to be in pain. You're going to be struggling. You're going to be in a lot of judgment because life has a lot of ebbs and flows. And if we smack ourselves against every single one of those ebbs and flows and we resist it, then we're going to feel the repercussions of that resistance. And essentially we create our own suffering. Yet when we can say, oh, wait a minute, here's another wave, right? Here's another big wave coming. I'm going to just relax. I'm going to ride it. I'm going to let the wave carry me. Even though it's a little uncomfortable and I'm kind of nervous here and I don't know what's going to happen, I'm going to trust that there's a grander plan, right? That there's a higher power, that there's this infinite intelligence in the universe that manages nature and runs nature and manages my body and runs my body. And I'm going to trust that that same intelligence has a hand in my life, yeah. right? And I'm going to see whatever the situation is as giving me the chance to learn and grow, the chance to expand, the chance to tap into new gifts inside of myself that I have that may be lying dormant that I didn't know, Mm -hmm. you know, wanted Mm -hmm. to be expressed out in the world. Yes, yes. Yes. This, my friend, uh, ladies, I want you to make sure you're taking notes because this, you've asked me 50,000 times, how do I build confidence? This is it. I love the way you said it right now, Donna. It requires you to trust, to submit. And that is not fun for any of us. But the minute we do submit, submit and let go, recognize that, you know, that control that we thought we had, it's a complete illusion. It's not real. We are able to go ahead and just be willing to see what life has to offer. And we know and trust ourselves that whatever comes up, we are going to be able to protect ourselves. We are going to be able to conquer it, battle it, or live through it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you, in a way, we get to prove to ourselves that we are a lot more resilient than Mm -hmm. what we might've thought. We are a lot more creative than what we have given ourselves credit for. We are a lot more on every level of our being. And unfortunately we get trapped by our limited thinking and by the belief systems that we were brought up with. And those belief systems They act as a cage, right? They act as confines, keeping us within what we already know. Yeah. So I love the analogy of like, color outside the lines. Hell yes. (laughs) You know, be willing to get it wrong. Be willing to get messy. Yeah. I have a a true story. You know, when we... I I truly believe that all of the gifts that we have that want to be shared out in the world, they're all right under our nose, right? They're right under our nose, right there. but we often don't see them. And oftentimes we will experience traumatic things in our childhood that will literally shut down the gifts that we have. So I was in kindergarten. I cannot believe that I'm telling the story on your podcast, (laughs) but I've been getting poked to tell it for the Past yes, few minutes here, so it. I'm going to just go with it. Let's do it. <laughs> um, I was in kindergarten and I was sitting in the very back of the room, chatting away to whoever I was talking to next to me. And the teacher, you know, called me out and asked me to stop talking. And then she said, and try sitting like a lady. 
Ooh. Ooh. Well, I was squatting in my chair. And when she said that, every kid in front of me, right? Because I'm sitting way in the back of the class. Yeah, yeah. Every kid pushed themselves away from their desk and turned around and looked at me. Mm. And I suffered pretty intense humiliation, right? And that single act, which I did not remember until I'm like doing this deep work in my master's program. Yeah. That single act shut down my voice and shut down my expression for, you know, 40 years. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's like, I've always had the gift of gab. I've always, you know, liked to express my voice and to be heard. I always wanted to be a singer, but I, you know, my mother told me I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. I don't know if that's really (laughs) true or not, but that's what she told me. And that's what I believed, you know, (laughs) like we get these plants, we get these little seeds when we're young and then we adopt that as part of our person and we walk off in our life with taking on something that, that may not be true and that yeah. may not be ours. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, let me ask you something. What advice would you give to the housewife who feels stressed and disconnected? You've got to get yourself at the top of your list. Like, and and I don't mean that in a selfish way. I mean that in a self-honoring way. And I hear from women all the time, like, oh, I feel guilty. I feel, you know, when, when we feel guilty about something, that's making ourselves wrong. Yep. So when we make a self-honoring choice, that's a choice that's going to benefit everyone. When we really do something that's selfish, it benefits only the person who's doing it. But I really want to reflect to your listeners that if they're giving from an empty cup, they're not really helping anyone. They're not showing up as their best self for their husband, for their kids, for their community, for whatever contribution that they want to make. So all of those circles benefit when people can be responsible enough to say, you know what? I'm worth it. Yeah. I'm worth 15 minutes in the morning to sit in the silence with myself and the universe. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. For, for me to that. slow down, you know, I, my meditation space I mentioned is in front of my sliding glass door because outside of that door is the birds and the clouds and the blue sky and the sun and the bugs and the hummingbirds, right? It's like the miraculous world of nature that I can connect with that for just a couple of moments and remind myself, Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm nature too. Amen. Yep. I love (laughs) I'm nature too. (laughs) Donna, where can we find you? Where can we find you? Because you have given us so much information. Where can we find you for those listening right now? Well, um, if you go to DonnaBond.com forward slash podcasts, I have a gift for your listeners, which is my class on four ways to get unstuck. Yay! So I've given you the highlights, but I go into great depth really walking you through all of these different stages, right? So after the growth stage, Veronica, we go into the six. I'm I'm cooking with gas, right? Like mm-hmm. I've got five plates in the air and it's humming and everything's great. But then what happens? Yep. It becomes familiar mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. whole thing starts all over again. <laughs> all over again. again. All over again. Right? All and over again. We, we want our growth to be linear because we have linear minds and we yes. want there to be a clear beginning and a clear end, but there isn't. No. Our growth happens in a spiral and yep. we take a lap around these spirals, right? And every time we take a lap, we go up and we go out. We take another yeah. lap, we go up and we get a different perspective and we go out and we can see it from a different angle. So we're always learning. We're always growing. And we can either do that 
with open-mindedness and open-heartedness, or we can resist it. Yeah, I agree. If we're feeling stuck, life is asking you to get out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Yep, I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you so much for being on. This has been amazing. Thank you. And, you know, there's also much more of this in my new book, Original Wisdom, Harness the Power of the Authentic You, which on that same webpage, your listeners can find information about that. And I'm on Amazon and Barnes & Noble and all those places in the world. So, Veronica, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. This has been a pleasure. Many women lose their own identity in the shadow of being a mom and a wife. We are a community of women who support each other. We leave perfectionism behind to become empowered and unapologetic. I want to personally invite you to join our girl gang. It's a free Facebook community for women just like you. Go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash empowered and unapologetic. See you there. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now, write a review, rate the episode, and subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020 and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. Hey there. This is Casey McGuire Davidson, host of the Hello Someday podcast. I'm an ex-red wine girl turned life coach who helps busy women change their relationship with alcohol. I spent 20 years climbing the corporate ladder while drinking a bottle of wine a night to unwind. In the Hello Someday podcast, my goal is to teach you the tried and true secrets of creating and living a life you don't want to escape from. Each week, I'll bring you tools, lessons, and conversations to help you drink less and live more. I'll teach you how to navigate our drinking-obsessed culture without a buzz and how to turn the decision to stop drinking from your worst case scenario to the best decision of your life. You can find new episodes of the Hello Someday podcast every Thursday, wherever you listen. And I hope you check it out. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking 24-7, why we have no off switch, and why we crave alcohol. If you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is, then I hope that you will check out the Sober Powered Podcast. New episodes every Friday. See you there. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, 
we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking 24-7, why we have no off switch, and why we crave alcohol. If you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is, then I hope that you will check out the Sober Powered Podcast. New episodes every Friday. See you there. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there.